Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is the Belief Buffet, part of Hug Nation. And today I want to talk about a tribute to a man who inspired me and who put ripples into the world and how we all can create ripples by being our true selves, by living in integrity. And so today I celebrate Mark Hinckley. I discovered this weekend that he passed away and he was massively influential to me. Mark Hinckley was the lead of a camp called Zara. And in the year 2000, my camp, the Lust Monkeys, joined forces with another San Diego camp called Zara. So we were the Lust Monkeys of Zara for one year. Mark was, he was an elder. He was a lawyer. He worked on the school board. He was the only true grown-up that I knew who was also a burner. He somehow had found a way to have this fire of an artist and a creator and a revolutionary and also live in the world, the default world. And Zara was the most ambitious camp that I've ever been a part of. Yes, including what we do now at Pink Heart. Zara was whew, a big project. Lots of work year-round, work parties, fundraisers. And we were placed on the 2 o'clock Esplanade location. And if you've gone to Burning Man, you might know that 2 Esplanade is the most high-profile sound camp, big camp that you can have. And what we created was this massive, fully enclosed dance club that was filled with black lights, plastic forests in neon, and live grass sawed, live grass inside and misters to keep it alive during the week. Plus it had this raised dance floor and underneath the dance floor, this raised dance floor, was a cuddle pile, a secret location cuddle area that you had to, that someone had to show you how to get there, but you could go and this, you know, risque adults only cuddle area filled with pillows underneath the dance floor. We also had this wooden hallway that had holes cut in it with these fabric arms where you had these trees that would hug you as you went through the hallway. It was incredible and ambitious. And so when it came time to get to Playa, we built all through pre-build, we built all through the weekend, and we weren't done. And so as Burning Man began Monday into Tuesday, we were still building, which I have never forgotten. And now anything that I am a part of that I designed for Burning Man, we always make it modular so you can build as much as possible before you get there. I am of the mind, when Burning Man opens, I want to be done. I want to be full on participation mode when it is time to, to engage in the playa. Participation meaning still, you know, still hosting, still serving food and water and things like that, but not building and having to be kind of like, we're not ready yet, we're not yet ready yet, and uh, say no to things on the playa. I want to say yes whenever possible. So, but this week we built all day Monday into Tuesday and finally had our opening night party on Tuesday night. And it was epic. It was arguably the coolest, most incredible thing on the playa. Many people, as they, I, I hung out outside our, our frontage. We had like this hallway, entranceway that you would go through a big sign and go into the, before you go into this black lit paradise with grass flooring. And I hung out in front of this hallway and as people were exiting, I just heard people go, wow, holy shit, that's the coolest thing on Playa, wow, wow. And if you have participated in Burning Man, to know that you have done anything to make the city better is just the greatest feeling. And to get that ego burst feeling like you may have created the coolest thing on the Playa in this moment, it's one of my greatest thrills. So the next night, or well, the next day, a windstorm like I have never seen before or since hit Black Rock City. And it was relentless, hour after hour after hour after hour after hour of just like white out, hard wind. Like if you went outside and just like, it was like pelting of the wind and the, and the dust and little, little pieces of rock. So 
you know, most of the day was just hiding in my tent. At one point, went out to try to do something that I said I was going to do, I guess, meet somebody at center camp or do a talk or something. And when I came back, the camp had been devastated. At some point, this fully enclosed structure that we with poles and, and tarps and covering, the wind got underneath it, peeled back the metal, bent it, made the pipes were flying through the air, the ballasts of black lights crashed to the ground, there was just debris. It was like a, a tornado or a hurricane or some other piece of weather that I've never seen except on TV. It was a miracle that no one died. Like there were tons of people that were hiding in our area on the grass as this storm was going. And as all the pipes went flying and the ballast, nobody was hit. Truly playa magic. So the next day, the storm subsided and there was um, the ability to leave our tents and come out and survey the wreckage. And it was oh, terrible. Not only was the wreckage terrible, like so much of our black plastic and grass and all this, our decor had, because it wasn't contained by our our enclosure anymore, it just went flying in this crazy storm. So we created so much moop. And as the week went on and the sun beat down on the grass, so much dried debris just flew away. It's one of the darkest shames of my Burning Man 24 years. And I, 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 I don't know if this is for sure, but I know that Burning Man now has a no organic materials rule. So you can't bring live trees or live grass anymore. And it may have been our fault. So the next day as we were in the wreckage, hugging each other and just like shocked at how literally almost a year of work and fundraising was destroyed in a day. And the, as we were sitting there as a camp trying to comfort ourselves and just process this true loss. Mark Hinckley, the camp lead, came out. And as he approached the crowd of us that were in the wreckage, weeping, I was like, oh my gosh, how is he going to handle this? Like, it, of, of all the people that have invested energy into this over the last year, he is the most dedicated, the most involved. And as he approached our crowd of people with cigarette in hand, slowly looking around. We're all just like hanging on, what's he gonna say? He said, well, this just shows that Mother Nature is the true director of this play. I will never forget that. I have told that story hundreds of times. The true deepest lesson of Burning Man perhaps is surrender. That letting go of the way you think things should be. Just because they go differently the way they should be doesn't mean they don't go exactly the way they are meant to be. And that idea of surrender influenced me in so many ways. You know, one of the core philosophies I have of love more, fear less, float more, steer less, was impacted by that idea. Surrender. Mother Nature is directing this play. So I am so grateful for Mark's influence in my life, for his inspiration. And as I am still in the process of trying to fathom and really accept his passing, I'm also filled with this incredible gratitude and this powerful reminder of how when we live in integrity, when we live according to our ideals, when we just speak our truth, we create ripples in the world in untold ways. I bet Mark had no idea in that moment how much it impacted me and how much it, I have spread that vibe. His ripples have, have become my ripples. How would he have known that? 
I don't know if I ever told him that, which is tragic. But I think that's part of my faith, that we don't have to necessarily know or be told. We just have to have faith. You put ripples in the world, and you have no idea how they impact people. You do the best you can. And we become the collective ripples of those that inspire us. And then those ripples become part of the ripples that we put in the world and inspire others. So I'm so grateful to you, Mark. I will bring a tribute to you to the Burning Man Temple this year. And I will work to honor you for the rest of my life. I wanted to share one postscript because I think it somehow ties this all together. I received a, a message through Instagram over the weekend as I was reflecting on my life and what brought me to this exact moment. I was reminded of a quote you shared that resonated with me. Love more, fear less, float more, steer less. I found your videos as a young, impressionable teen. I was 15. I had high hopes of preparing myself for Burning Man as a gift to myself upon graduation. And without even realizing it, the handfuls of videos I watched of yours at the time would help me develop into who I am now in my late 20s. I wanted to revisit you somehow and let you know that those words stuck with me on my journey. Your videos helped guide me on a path of gratitude. The mantra I repeated for the past decade has led me to every success thus far. Thank you. Since listening to your words for the first time, I've walked this life with an active thought of exuding love and kindness. Thank you for guiding this stranger with your videos and sharing your life and lessons in the way that you do. So to that person, I say, you're so welcome. And hopefully, Mark, you hear that too and know that you deserve that thank you too. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share these ripples to all those whose ripples shaped me and to all those who will be shaped by this collective, this collective accumulation of inspiration in the future. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> Much love to everyone on this beautiful Monday. I'm feeling so grateful also for this weekend we had a pink heart fundraiser and I did so little work. The ripples of pink heart have affected so many beautiful people and I got to hear stories of how it's affected them and get to witness the work and effort and creativity and creation of people all, you know, so much beyond any one person, this just being authentic and honoring our inspirations in the moment, letting, you have no idea, you have no idea the way things are supposed to be. You just can be genuine and present and trust, have faith. So oh, I see you here, Fred. Fred, who is there on the fly with us that beautiful, magical, dangerous year. <laughs> Oh, and if you're here joining me live or you're watching this recording, I ask you now to join me in a hug. So give yourself a squeeze. And in this moment, let's be connected beyond time and space, not, not caring where our feet are, just knowing where our heart is. And we can be connected to one another. We can be connected to those in our memories. We can be connected to those that we even we are maybe at odds with or disagree with, knowing that deep down we have this shared humanity. And so as we surrender to that shared humanity, surrender to this flow that is beyond our understanding or impact or, or control, let's be connected in this moment 
as we take a deep breath in and give a hug to one another, hold it at the top. And release. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb, Mark Hinckley, and all of you beautiful ambassadors of love, thank you for being here for this Hug Nation hug. <laughs>